Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. In this video, we continue working with Scala.js, and now we are integrating it into our Play Framework. We saw in the last video how we kind of put things together with Play and Scala.js. We saw that the there is a client package, and our main is bringing in a script that is created from this main here. And by the way, you know this doesn't matter. It turns out nothing specifies this. Wherever we def our main, if we were to change the name of this class, it would work just fine. Oh, um, the now what I want to do is take and implement one of our task lists. Okay, so we're going to make a version six of our task list, and that version is going to be very similar to version three. Our version three used traditional JavaScript to interact with the DOM and give us the functionality that we wanted. I want to do that, but instead of doing it through traditional through JavaScript, uh, I want to do it with Scala.js. Okay. So first we have to do our setup for this. Um, while this is going to work a lot like version 3, it turns out that in many ways it's more similar to version 4 as far as the controller goes, because I'm going to attach it to the back end from version 5. So version 5 is the one that sits on top of the database. I'm going to continue using that database backend and the routes for communicating JSON with data pulled from the database. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and copy the controller for version 4 and we are going to make a task list 6.scala where we paste that in and change it to 6 and it will load in a view for version 6 main. Let's come down here and let's make a new file version 6 main.scala.html and I think I'm actually happy with it looking like the version 4. Let's see, we're going to change this so that, oh actually no, I don't want it to look like version 4. Let's copy version 5. And the reason is I want the routes to point to the database version and I don't want to have to go change those. Okay, so it will now say task list 6. We are not using React for this and we don't want to bring in the version 5 script. We want the script that's generated by Scala.js. So we're going to leave the page like this for the moment. So we have a page we have a controller. If we want to be able to pull up this page, we need this load to be in our routes. So we go down to server conf routes. And we are routes for version 6. We'll put 1 in here following our naming convention. It will be load 6 and it goes to task list 6. Okay, let's see if that actually works. So I'm actually on that URL there. We do a compile. Looks like it's happy. It's not a very interesting page, but you can see all of our hidden elements that are sitting in here. Okay, there's there's currently nothing else that is that is in here. Uh, we might actually need to add, let's go look at version 3's view. Because version 3, yep, so we need to <clears throat> pull in a little bit more of the HTML. We still have all of those routes. And I don't really care whether the routes are first or the other HTML is first. And this is, once again, version 6. Login. Okay, so all these things are tagged and they are set up to work with this version 3 JavaScript. Okay, uh, so now if we were to refresh this page, we get something that looks like this. Excellent. That's exactly what we want. Now we need to put the, the guts behind it because right now this doesn't really do anything. Uh, login is undefined. Nothing is going to work from here. So how do we make it so that things work? Um, and actually, let's go look at that 
version 3 to make sure that we know what we are doing. We made it so that when we click these things, ah yes, we are directly calling methods. We are directly calling, or the functions, the login function, the create user function. So we will have to do that JS uh, export top level so that these calls, add tasks and logout, uh, all exist inside of the JavaScript. So that'll be an important thing for us to, to remember to do. Okay, so what do we do now? How do we get the JavaScript from here to work inside of our, I think we're done with routes, inside of our Scala.js example? Okay. Well, I probably want to have some type of protection code because once again, this main is running for every page and it's only this page that we want to have do these things. So I'm actually going to add one more hidden element here. And I actually don't care about the value at all here, but I do care about the ID. I'm going to give it an ID of version 6. And its value is just going to be empty. And its entire reason for existing is so that we can write an if statement like what we had before, but instead of looking for Scala.js shoutout, I'm going to look for version 6. If version 6 does exist, then we're going to do some code. And it will be the code that is the our Scala.js equivalent to, to this. If it doesn't exist, we won't do it. Now, I don't want to add a whole bunch more code into this one file. I want to split it up. We have our JavaScript split up here in the, the different, whoops, JavaScript split up into different versions. We should be able to organize our code nicely inside of this. And indeed, I can come in here and I can make a new, let's call it, version 6.scala, I can make a new object called version 6 and put stuff inside of here. So I could have, for example, an init function, if I wanted, that would that would be called whenever it detects this. So inside of here, we could do version 6 dot init. And just to verify that that's actually happening, we could put in a little print line. And load in 6. And there we go. So we're in version 6. So you can see how we can break up the code here and protect it so that certain elements only happen at certain times. Now we need to start bringing in stuff from version 3. And at least for a first draft, I'm tempted to take these elements and simply paste them up inside of our file. Now, of course, we don't declare constants with const in Scala. Val makes a constant for us. Oh, uh, we don't need semicolons. Now, if I hit save, this is unhappy because we don't have document brought in yet. So let's go ahead and let's do an import. I don't know if I actually need DOM, but just in case, I'll leave it there. And document, get element by ID. Now, it has this problem that says value isn't a member of this. Remember, once again, JavaScript is all dynamically typed. And so you just call value and cross your fingers and hope that there is a value on the thing that you that you got. And some of that we can't get away from because this is being pulled in by an ID. If the HTML is messed up, we will get something of a different type. But in Scala.js, we also need to tell it that this has a value because basic elements don't have a value. There are only certain things in the DOM that have values. And so we have to tell this that, um, that we are, that we're actually working with something that has a value type. And it turns out that here we're going to use our as instance of, and there is an HTML dot 
input. And HTML, I am going to do another import here, org.scala.js.html. This is actually on the list. I simply, oops, sorry, .dom.html. And it has a value, as we would expect. So we have to explicitly tell the Scala.js that this is the type of thing that we're working with so that we can get a value out of it. Okay, so this is beginning our transformation. We still have a lot more code for the interactions that we need to pull into here, but for now, uh, I'm going to leave this be, and we'll come in in the next video and continue converting code over from JavaScript to Scala.js, probably go with our login next and make sure that we can get that to work.